You're not seeing as much coverage about this on the mainstream media liberal net networks like ABC, CBS, NBC, the rest of the alphabet soups. Hashtag, ne uh, hashtag never CNN. I call it hashtag never CNN because it's a garbage network for the garbage folks spewing out. Well, garbage. I watch as an occupational hazard so you don't have to. I did enjoy a portion of CNN programming last evening. As I'm certain that many of their viewers, leftists all it seems, were left in slack-jawed amazement that there are people considering themselves Democrats that talk differently than other leftists in their circles. I'm speaking specifically of Robert Kennedy Jr., who gave a very interesting interview. Is Robert Kennedy Jr. difficult to listen to for anyone else because of his voice? And it, I don't begrudge him his voice. I mean, obviously, it is what it is. I'm not casting aspersions. I'm just being honest with you. It is sometimes difficult for me to listen to Robert Kennedy Jr. because it feel, it sounds like, and I don't know that it feels this way, and he, he's probably spoken on it from time to time, it sounds like what's happening with him hurts. Doesn't it? So sometimes it's difficult for me to get through the, the voice and, and hear what he has to say. A lot of which I like. Some of which I absolutely don't like. The most appealing aspect of Robert Kennedy Jr., the most appealing aspect of what he is doing, shaking up the political dynamic as we really begin the 2024 election cycle in earnest. We've got our players, friends. Maybe there are a few others to shake out of all of this. We've got to figure out who the VP selection is going to be for Donald Trump. We feel like we know that they are stuck, the Democrats, with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. I don't know. I have long believed that they would move off that. They would move off that train and find something different. It does not seem that they have the ability to do so. There's the Kennedy dynamic that upsets the apple cart to a certain degree, and I think it, it impacts negatively Democrats more than it impacts Trump, although it might impact Trump because there's a segment of voters that might lean Trump that will go Kennedy. I think those voters are still angry about COVID-19 and what was known as the pandemic, and they're very frustrated about the government's willingness and desire and demand that we all get damn vaccinated. Well, you got to remember, I think Joe's right about one thing and democracy is on the ballot. So he that RFK needs to drop out so that we can save democracy by having less choice. I. Right. And yes, I am being sarcastic, people. No, no, I get it. I'm glad you brought that up, though. You and I think in simpatico in some ways. I wrote this down this morning. Because I heard what, what who was it? Aaron Burnett of CNN that was interviewing him. I I don't I, I I leave CNN to you like you have instructed me to. Well, it's probably for the best. Um, sorry, I just got distracted. I just saw that uh, the uh, Joe uh, Flaherty. You know Joe Flaherty. I think he was a Canadian. He was on uh, SCTV. Was on Happy Gilmore. He did, I just got a news flash that he died. That distracted me. Squirrel. Um, what do you think that means? Liberals have fallen in love with this phrase since Donald Trump came about. What do you think it means? Democracy is on the ballot. It infuriates me. But it's one of the central topics that I wanted to discuss today. I think this is a strong indicator that oftentimes the political left will pretend to be against that which they are engaged in. There's something psychological about it. They think everyone else thinks the way that they think, and they don't like democracy very much. Certainly some of the results that they've had lately. Primarily, I'm thinking of the result that happened in 2016. And since then, they've been telling us repeatedly ad nauseum that democracy is on the ballot. Democracy, they say, is on the ballot. What does that mean? Sincerely, what do you think they mean by that? I don't understand what it means. 
I genuinely do not know what they mean. Democracy is the ballot. Now, anytime we have this discussion, we have to talk about democracy and the definition of that word, and I know how much so many of you hate it. I understand how so many of you hate it because you you insist that it's a lift, a liberal word and that we are a representative republic. And we are a representative republic. You could also call us a constitutional republic if you so desire. And I, I don't have any desire to fight with you about it because there's no need. America is a form of democracy. Oh, yes, we are. And if you think we're not, I mean, I hate to be this way, but you're wrong. You're wrong. We are. You want us to be, I don't mean to speak for you, but I, I think I've done this enough that I've got it figured out. You want us to be more specific with what type of democracy we're talking about, because there's two basic forms. There's direct democracy, which we hate, and rightly so. That's the rule of the mob. And there's indirect democracy, which we are a form of. Constitutional republics abide by the rule of law, not by the will of the mob. Direct democracies don't really work. And we figured that out pretty early on in the democratic cycle. Because there are a lot of knuckleheads that live around here. And those knuckleheads, they can't figure it out. They can't find their butts with a flashlight and a compass. And so you elect, you even out the edges through constitutional, a constitutional or representative republic, you even out the edges, you soften the edges of some of those on the fringes by electing representation to go act in your stead as your proxy. That's what a representative republic is. Or a constitutional republic. But ultimately, I don't think democracy is a bad word like some have decided that it is. I don't allow liberals to steal the language away from me. And I'm not going to start. That said. Our founding fathers created what was a form of an indirect democracy. And I wonder how many of us truly want to keep it. I do. I think you do as well. I don't think liberals do. They scream their words so loudly in an attempt, in an effort to overcome their actions. Let's talk about that next because I want to know what you think they mean when they say democracy is on the ballot.